Good evening, Trinity Church. Welcome to our Christmas Eve worship service tonight. My name is Pastor Jeff, and I'm so glad that you're all with us here. And I'm, I'm also glad I didn't say good morning, because I've already said it a couple of times. Uh, we do welcome you. We are thrilled to have you here with us, and it is so nice to see a relatively full church on this Christmas Eve at our 7 o'clock service. I want to uh, ask you to be in prayer for some of our people. And just to say a word, uh, lower this for just a moment. Um, there are times where I feel more comfortable wearing a mask. There are times where I feel fine not wearing a mask. Tonight I choose to wear one and uh, I'm not feeling sick or anything. I just feel in a larger church tonight, I just wanna do that. Um, I'm aware that COVID is not gone yet. Um, Please be in prayer for Drew Harvey. Drew is preaching for a colleague of mine right now. He was supposed to be here tonight, but one of my colleagues and his family tested positive, and so Drew at the last minute had to go fill in somewhere. Um, and and what, a, what a blessing it is for them to have Drew preach there. Uh, yet at the same time, it's a reminder that we still have to be careful. Um, I know there's, there are people that would love to be here tonight that can't be because of positive tests. And there are people that would love to be here tonight but aren't because they're not feeling safe quite yet. I say all that to say, let's do our best to live life. Let's do our best to be careful. And let's do our best to put our trust in Christ to get us through this and to believe that Jesus is still on the throne and that God is still in charge. And tonight... I would like us to, as much as we can, set aside the worries and the fears. My sermon is gonna be called Gloom and Glory. We're in a mix of those things, and we're gonna look and see how we can find glory, even in the gloom that seems to settle on us at certain times. Uh, so at this time, let us come together in a spirit of worship. Let us come together in a spirit of praise. Let us come together in a spirit of hope as we welcome the Christ child into the world with our special Christmas Eve services. And I'd like us to begin this evening with our opening hymn, O Come All Ye Faithful, verses one through four. That's found in your hymnals on page 234. Let's stand together as we sing.
Amen. Please be seated. And would the children come forward at this time for our children's message? Okay, don't you? Look at how quiet they're waiting up here so patiently. Good for you. Someone drew me something. Oh, is that a baby in the manger? Yeah. That's yeah. beautiful. Thank you so much. Look at that drawing. I love that. You know, today, I've got a special puzzle that I want to show you all. This is really neat. I made this with a special saw. And I'll let the pieces fall, and then I'm going to explain those pieces and have you all help me put it back together. You ready? Yeah. Three. Two, one. There they all go. Now this is really neat. Stay down there. I'm going to have you all sit down there and I'll make sure that this all makes sense. This is called a nativity puzzle. And all these pieces are going to tell the story of the birth of Jesus. And that story starts with... I love that story. I love that story too. That story starts with two parents, Mary and Joseph, who went to a town. Does anybody know the name of the town they went to? Bethlehem. Bethlehem, that's right. They went to Bethlehem, and they looked for a place to sleep, but they couldn't find any place in the inn, so they stayed in a stable. And in a stable, that's a place where they keep what? Animals, right? I think we have... A little cow here, and we've got a sheep eating some grass. And there's another part of this story where these are a couple of other sheep that look like they're from Minecraft. They're kind of blockheaded, aren't they? <laughs> but there was a field where there were a lot of sheep, and all of a sudden an angel appeared over that field and spoke to someone. Do you remember who the angel spoke to? Jesus! Oh, it was Jesus. We're almost there, but we're not there yet. You're right. It was the shepherds. And there was a shepherd out there, and he was watching his sheep. And the angel came and said, Behold, I tell you good news. There is born today in the town of David a Savior, and he is Christ the Lord. And so we've got Mary, and we've got Joseph, and we've got the shepherd and the sheep. What are we missing? Baby Jesus, that's right. And here we have a little manger with baby Jesus, and we put Jesus there. And now we've got the scene set, but I still have a couple extra pieces. Let's see. You know, these pieces probably were not at the manger, but after Jesus was born and they took him back home, there was a story in the Bible about three wise men that came from afar and we put a camel in there because maybe they came on a camel. We're not sure. We're not even sure if it was only three. But they brought three gifts. And so we often say there were three wise men. They came. I know that. The grandma had one and that's a gift. She got my yacht. All right. We get gifts from the wise men. Jesus got gifts from the wise men. He got gold, incense, and this thing called myrrh. I really don't even know myself what myrrh is. But I know it was a gift fit for a king. And they gave these gifts to Jesus because Jesus was special. And you know what? Christmas is when? Tomorrow. Tomorrow, right? So 
tomorrow is Christmas, and I'll bet you you're going to get some gifts too. And you know why you get gifts? Because you're special. Because you're special, and God loves each and every one of you, and God loves each and every one of you. God loves each and every one of us enough to send Jesus as a sign of God's love to say, you are special, you are loved, and you matter. So let's take that with us to everyone we see. And remember that every person we see is special, is loved by God, and matters. And each one of us does too. Isn't that a great gift of Christmas? Well, let's say a prayer. Dear Jesus, we thank you for Christmas. We thank you for the gift of your son, Jesus. And we pray that you would help all of us to know that we are special, that we are loved, and that we matter to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Lucas, can you help me by grabbing the fruit snacks over there? Yes. And hand those out while I put this puzzle back together. All right, everybody. See Mr. Lucas over there? People give you fruit snack and you go back to your Check one, two. Testing one, two, three. Is it on? Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you, Ken. And great to have the kids up here. Thank you to the parents for bringing them to celebrate Christmas Eve with us. Tonight we're going to now light the Advent candles. And the way we do it here at Trinity is we have different carols that we sing for the lighting of each candle. And we have scriptures that we read for the lighting of each candle as well. And I'd like to invite our worship leader this evening, Lucas Dunst, to come up. And he is going to assist me in reading the scriptures. And after the scripture is read, then we'll light the candle and you will sing verse 1 of each of those songs as each candle is lit and following the reading of each scripture. So please give your attention to Lucas. First, as we prepare to light the candle of hope, a verse from Isaiah 9, verses 2 through 7. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. You have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. They rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest, as men rejoice when dividing the plunder. For as in the day of Midian's defeat, you have shattered the yoke that burdens them the bar across their shoulders, the rod of the oppressor. Every warrior's boot used in battle and every garment rolled in blood will be destined for burning, will be fuel for the fire. For to us, a child is born, to us, a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. You can remain seated. Please remain seated as we sing the first hymn, Hark the Herald Angels Sing.
The next scripture is the word of the prophet from Isaiah chapter 7, verses 10 through 14, as we light the candle of peace. Again, the Lord spoke to Ahaz, Ask the Lord your God for a sign, whether in the deepest depths or in the highest heights. But Ahaz said, I will not ask. I will not put the Lord to the test. Then Isaiah said, Hear now, you house of David. Is it not enough to try the patience of men? Will you try the patience of my God also? Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. Please remain seated as we sing verse 1 of What Child Is This? Now from Isaiah, chapter 11, verses 1 through 6. A shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse, from whose roots a branch will bear fruit. The spirit of the Lord will rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and of understanding, the spirit of counsel and of power, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord, and he will delight in the fear of the Lord. He will not judge by what he sees with his eyes or decide by what he hears with his ears, but his righteousness he will judge the needy. With justice he will give decisions for the poor of the earth. He will strike the earth with the rod of his mouth. With the breath of his lips he will slay the wicked. Righteousness will be his belt, and faithfulness the sash around his waist. The wolf will live with the lamb. The leopard will lie down with the goat. The calf and the lion and the yearling together, and a little child will lead them. Up next, we'll be singing Angels from the Realms of Glory. Next, as we light the, the fourth candle, the candle of love, we read from Micah chapter 5, verses 1 through 4. Marshal your troops, O city of troops, for a siege is laid against us. They will strike Israel's ruler on the cheek with a rod. But you, Bethlehem Ephrathah, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from of old, from ancient times. Therefore Israel will be abandoned until the time when she who is in labor gives birth, and the rest of his brothers return to join the Israelites. 
He will stand and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And they will live securely, for then his greatness will reach to the ends of the earth. Let's sing, O Little Town of Bethlehem. In a moment, I'm gonna ask Dan to play a special music meditation. And during that time, I'd like you just to kind of quiet your souls, quiet your spirits, and prepare for a time of prayer. And then Lucas will lead us in the congregational prayer. But before we do that, I'm gonna do something and put someone on the spot and ask if I can show off my granddaughter to the congregation because she's here with us tonight and I want you, you've heard me talk about her, I want you to meet little Lottie. Every now and then we take a moment of personal privilege. Thank you for that. And now at this time, uh, please do quiet your hearts, still your souls, calm your spirits, and let us prepare for prayer.
Will you join me now in prayer? Loving God, be present with us as we remember the birth of Jesus, your Son and our Savior. Help us to share in the songs of the angels and the glad worship of shepherds. As we gather around the holy newborn child, close the door of hate, and open the door of love over all your world. Let your mercy accompany every gift, and kindness come with every greeting. Deliver us from evil, forgive us our sins, and teach us to be joyously devoted to Christ and his life-giving kingdom. May our worship of this Christmas bring honor to you, Lord. May your presence with us lead to good news, great joy, and a newborn heart as we rejoice and praise your everlasting name. In the name of the child of Bethlehem, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Now I'll give your attention to the anthem, Were You There on That Christmas Night?
Now a reading from Matthew 4, verses 12 through 17. When Jesus heard that John had been arrested, he left Judea and returned to Galilee. He went first to Nazareth, then left there and moved to Carpenaum. Am I reading the right thing? No, okay. I am. Um, he left to Nazareth, then left there and moved to Carpenaum, beside the Sea of Galilee, in the region of Zebulun and Naphtali. This fulfilled what God said through the prophet Isaiah. In the land of Zebulun and Naphtali, beside the sea, beyond the river Jordan, in Galilee, where so many Gentiles lived, the people who sat in darkness have, been, have seen a great light. And for those who lived in a land where death casts its shadow, a light has shined. From then on, Jesus began to preach, repent of your sins and turn to God, for the kingdom of heaven is near. Thank you, Lucas, uh, for sharing that scripture. And for our ministry moment tonight, I want to share with you uh, something that has been really a good benefit for us over the last uh, 18 months with COVID is that we've been able to have an online ministry. And I just spoke with somebody, I'll share who it was. It was Joan Kernahan. She lived next door to the church for over 50 years. And after Bill died, she had to move. It was best for her. Her family decided to move down south to be closer with family. And she's hours from us now. She's in a new place. Uh, they're taking good care of her there, but she is in a rest home. Uh, she's no longer with the husband that she had for so many years because he's gone. She's no longer in the home that she had for over 50 years because she had to move. Um, she's with people that she does not know very well. Uh, there are church services there, but she's not quite comfortable with them. They're not familiar to her, at least not yet. And she's having... She's doing the best she can, but she told me that the adjustment has not been an easy one. But one bright spot for her has been that every week she is able to tune in online and watch her church at worship. And that is at least one thing that is constant for her, one thing that brings her comfort, one thing that brings her stability, one thing that brings her familiarity in this otherwise unfamiliar space that she is in. And that has been made possible because of the work of many here who have worked to get us up and running online. And Joan's story is one that I've heard, but I've heard several others as well, of people who have lost connection with the church, but who have reconnected through the online service. Now, do I want you to worship online or in person? I want you in person. I want you here. There's something special about being gathered together as the community of faith, as believers who are here. Uh, and yet, I realize there are circumstances where you can't and where people like Joan cannot make it on Sunday morning, but she can still be connected to Trinity uh, through the screen. And uh, what a blessing that has been. What a benefit that has been. And your giving has helped with that because we've had to purchase cameras, we've had to purchase other equipment, and we continue to work on upgrading our sound system and doing as much as we can to not only enhance our in-person worship, but also our online worship. And I invite you to be a part of that. This Christmas season, we've asked you to consider an extra gift to Trinity in one of three areas, either through our general fund, which funds a lot of different ministries around the world, as well as right here at home, uh, to consider giving to our Find Us Faithful capital campaign, or to give to our sound system so that we can do some necessary upgrades. So if God has blessed you in a special way this year and you'd like to give an extra gift, please consider one of those areas. And know that through your giving, uh, people like Joan are able to keep a connection here at Trinity. And that connection means more to her than words can express. We don't pass a plate right now, but there is a plate in the back of the church. If you'd like to leave something there on your way out, we would invite you to do so. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for the giving and for the blessings that you have given to us. Lord, may we give back to you. May we give as you have given to us. And may we bless others as you have blessed us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This time I'd like to introduce my son John. He is going to sing for us, O Holy Night. Stop. 
stars are brightly shining. It is the night of our dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin and ever pining till he appeared and the soul Our scripture lesson for this evening is from Isaiah, chapter 9, verses 1 through 7. A prophecy from the 7th century BC that has echoes in the 1st century and echoes even today. Nevertheless, there will be no more gloom for those who were in distress. In the past, he humbled the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, but in the future, he will honor Galilee of the Gentiles by the way of the sea along the Jordan. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. You have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. 
They rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest, as people rejoice when dividing the plunder. For to us, a child is born. To us, a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. The word of God for the people of God. Let us pray. Almighty God, we come before you tonight and we lift up to you this time, these scriptures and our spirits. As we gather for this Christmas Eve service, Lord, may you speak to our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Are you afraid of the dark? Fear of the dark is one of the greatest fears that we have. Why? Because we fear what we cannot see. And yet, if you think about it, we love this Christmas Eve service. Why not? No. I don't know, Ken. The light's on. The light's on. Check one, two. Testing. No? Grappling's in the system. Did I mention we're looking for an upgrade to our sound system, folks? And if you'd like to give to that, uh, you may do so. Let me stand over here then. Are you afraid of the dark? Fear of the dark. And yet, because of the dark, we can see things better. The darker it is, the brighter the light shines when that light shines in the darkness. How do we overcome our fears? How do we deal with fears of the dark, fears of the doom, fears of the gloom, etc., that we see? And what fears do you need to overcome? I believe that we overcome our fears by facing our fears. And I believe that as we look at these scriptures, we'll see how this world of doom and gloom is one that can indeed be overcome by the light and life of Jesus. And where in your world are you experiencing doom and gloom? Where in your world is there a lack of hope? Where in your world is there trouble? Is there despair? Is there uncertainty? And where do you need the light of Christ to shine through? And how can we find that light? I believe that we can find that light. You see, Isaiah's world was a world similar to ours. Isaiah's world was a world of doom and gloom and darkness and despair. And I want to read to you a few verses before what we've just read in chapter 9. As you look at these verses from chapter 8, verse 19 and following, when people tell you to consult mediums and spiritists who whisper and mutter, should not a people inquire of their God? Why consult the dead on behalf of the living? to the law and to the testimony. If they do not speak according to this word, they have no light of dawn. Distressed and hungry, they will roam through the land. When they are famished, they will become enraged and looking upward will curse their king and their God. Then they will look toward the earth and see, listen to this, only distress and darkness and fearful gloom and they will be thrust into utter darkness. That's how chapter 8 ends. And then chapter 9 begins, Nevertheless, there will be no more gloom for those who were in distress. And then it speaks of this light of the world. The first thing I want us to consider here is the state of the world. The state of the world. There is a darkness in the world, and that darkness is the darkness of sin. It's a part of the human condition. We all struggle with it. Every single person struggles with sin. And if you think you don't, then I have to tell you, you do. And if we tried to deal with that sin without 
acknowledging that sin, it makes it very difficult for God to work in our lives. But when we acknowledge there is darkness, when we acknowledge there is sin, when we acknowledge that we are not living as we should, that we've got regrets. There's things we have broken that we can't fix. There are things that we have said that we can't unsay. There are thoughts, private thoughts within our minds, within our hearts that we would not want others to hear or to know about. We struggle with sin. There's a darkness in the world. And yet, there is hope in the world as well. That darkness has a way of, of closing in around us. I can remember being in a cave when I was at Penn State University, we went to this cave called J4 over in Pleasant Gap. And I remember our guide used to say, all right, ignore the no trespassing sign and let's walk this way. And we would walk and then we would go into this whole literal, literal pipe in the side of a mountain and go inside. And once we were in the cave, he would tell us once we got in a little ways, turn off your lights. Everybody turn off your lights. I want to show you what true darkness is. And we turned off our lights, and in the depths of that cave, we could not see our hand in front of our face. I mean, we're going to turn down the lights in the sanctuary tonight. You might go outside on a moonless night and, and think that you're in the dark. But you can see somewhere ambient light a little bit in most cases. In the depths of that cave, we couldn't see. And there was a sense that that darkness was closing in around us. There was a sense that that darkness feeds our fears. Because we don't know what's out there. We don't know if we're going to take a step and fall. We don't know if we're going to run into something because we can't see it. Darkness closes in. Darkness feeds our fears. And darkness distorts our reality, doesn't it? Darkness, the darkness of sin that is in this world. The darkness of sin that is in our own lives. We feel it. We struggle with it if we're honest with ourselves. And yet there is a way out. There is a way through. And this is what I want to point you to. All that I read in chapter 8 to begin with. Darkness, despair, gloom, doom, utter darkness. And then that word, that beautiful word that starts off chapter 9. Nevertheless. Nevertheless. It means the same thing as a much smaller little three-letter word, but. Or a longer word, however. However you want to look at this, it's a change, it's a transition from something, even though this is the way things are. But, however, nevertheless, something is going to change. Something is better. You don't have to live in that darkness. You don't have to stay in that sin because we also have a light in our world. And that light is Jesus that light is Jesus prophesied about here in Isaiah. Come to fruition in Matthew's gospel in the first century and continuing to shine his light in our world today. We don't have to stay in darkness, my friends. There is light in our world. The state of the world is darkness. But there is hope in the world. So let's take a look now for a moment at the hope in the world and address this reality. Darkness and light coexist, both within us and without us. Darkness and light, if you think about your own life, despite the, the face that you put on for the rest of the world, despite how light and bright and good everything, you want everything to be that you show everybody else on Facebook or social media or on your Christmas cards, you know there's darkness inside as well. There is a darkness that exists in you. There is a light that exists in you as well. They both coexist, and they coexist in the world around us too. There's good in this world. Amen, there's good in this world. But there's also bad in this world. There's trouble. There's hardship. There's disease. There's divorce. There's brokenness. There's pain. We see it. We live it. But we also hang on to the light that is there. The hope of the world is found in Jesus because there is light. Several years ago, I had an opportunity to go to the Holy Land. One of the stories that I remember the, the most is our tour guide said, everyone experiences the Bible coming to life somewhere on this trip. I don't know where it will be for you, 
but everybody experiences it somewhere. And for me, it took place on what is known as the Mount of Beatitudes. Matthew chapter 5, Jesus gives these long sermons, the Sermon on the Mount, and it was believed that they, they know where he stood or the, the area where he was when he gave that sermon. And they took us there and they put us down and they said, go off and sit in the grass and just open up your Bibles to Matthew 5 and, and just read the Sermon on the Mount and read what you experience there. And so I began to read and I got to a part where it said, you are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither does someone light a lamp and then put it under a bowl. They lift that bowl off and let the light shine. In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. And as I read those words, in particular, the words that said, you are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. I remember looking up and looking out across the Sea of Galilee and seeing a city on a hill. The ancient city of Tiberias sits on that hill. Others speculate it might have been another smaller city up there that had a light on it that Jesus was talking about. But to me, it was, it was reading those words and, and then imagining a city on a hill cannot be hidden. And then I look up and, and there's a city on a hill right from the viewpoint of where I am now 2,000 years later. And the scriptures came alive for me in that moment. It was almost like I saw a tree where someone had carved with a knife, Jesus was here, and, and that it was still in existence there. Reading those words gave me chills and continue to give me chills today as I think Jesus was here. This stuff is real. This is the city Jesus was talking about. And what's the truth behind that teaching? The truth is that a light needs to shine. A light needs to shine. Nobody hides their light. It doesn't make sense to hide their light. This world needs the light. It's a world of gloom. It's a world of doom. So let's let the light shine. And here, take this point home with you. Gloom gives way to glory. When the light within us shines brighter than the darkness without us. Gloom gives way to glory. When Christ's light within shines brighter than the darkness without don't hide your light, folks. That light is there for a reason. The darkness has a tendency to close in, but the light, my friends, lets us see beyond ourselves. The darkness tends to feed our fears, but the light gives us a glimmer of hope. The darkness distorts our reality, but the light shows us the source of our shadows. It shows us what's real. It shows us what we need to be focused on, where we need to be concerned. You know, a colleague of mine told an interesting story. In this day and age where everybody's recording things and putting it out online, he was pre-recording his Christmas Eve service. And I would walk over there, but I won't because my mic's not working, so I'm going to stay here. But you'll notice that big, thick candle in the middle, the big white candle. We call that the Christ candle. And I'm going to give you a, a hint about these candles. These candles are not your typical wax candles. You all have a little wax candle. These candles are a little bit more special than that. They unscrew, and you pour oil into them. They have a plastic casing, and you pour oil into them, and that oil is what feeds the fuel that makes the light work. And as they were recording this service to go out onto the Internet, he lit the wick on the Christ candle, and it flickered and sputtered and went out. And so he got his little clicker out, and he lit it again, and it flickered and sputtered and went out. And he's thinking, this can't, I'm supposed to light the light of Christ. I can't have this thing sputter on, the, on film for everybody to see. And so he checked, and the problem was, you might have guessed by now, there was no oil in the candle. And even though the wick on the outside had just enough to flicker and sputter, it needed the fuel on the inside in order to light and shine for the world. And folks, in the same way, let your light shine before others. And the only way that's going to happen is if the light within you shines. 
If you don't have the light within you, then the light without is not going to shine for Jesus. So how do we get that light within us? How do we add fuel to the fire of God's Spirit inside of us? We need to deal with that darkness. We need to confess those sins. We need to get real with God and with ourselves and acknowledge that we don't have what it takes, that on our own we fall short of what we need to be, of who God calls us to be, and we need to confess those sins. But when we do, when we free ourselves through that confession and when we accept the grace of God given to us in Jesus, then we are set free from the power of sin. We are set free from that power of darkness and we experience the light of Jesus and we are able to let that light shine. And my friends, my prayer for you tonight as we experience Christmas Eve and await the coming of the Christ child, and the gifts of Christmas, that you would receive that most ultimate gift of Christmas, the Spirit of Jesus, to forgive your sins. And that having confessed and having experienced that light of Christ, that you would then let that light shine, that you would let that light within you be filled enough to shine on the outside as well. And I don't know about you, but we face burnout, don't we? We get tired of burning the candle at both ends. We get tired of trying to be good all the time. We get tired of trying to keep up with everything we have to keep up with, and burnout is a very real thing. It's like we're using up all the oil inside of us and we're not getting any replenished. And how are we gonna to continue to shine for Jesus if we can't shine Jesus' light on the inside, we can't really shine it too well on the outside either. So I want to give you some ideas on how to replenish or how to refuel. One is what you're doing here tonight. Coming to worship, connecting with Jesus among a community of believers. That's a part of it. That's a part of how we refuel. You can also do that on your own by spending time in prayer. Spend a little extra time meditating on the scriptures. Actually, I mean this, folks. Dust off your Bibles, open them up, and read them. Make that a point to do in the new year, a goal of yours. I'm going to read my Bible more than I did before. Reading God's Word, meditating on God's Word, it fills us on the inside. It, it gives us life and light that we can then go and share with others. And if you need some help with that, read a devotional. Join a small group. Take part in a Bible study. Do something to feed your soul, to nurture your spirit so that your flame doesn't flicker and sputter and go out, but instead your flame, the light of Christ within you is enough to shine on the outside as well. Bloom gives way to glory when Christ's light on the inside shines brighter than the darkness on the outside. May your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. In Jesus' name, amen. For our festival of carols now, I'd like you to uh, sing with us the first verse of these various carols. Uh, you can remain seated as we do that. And during this time, we're going to start dimming the lights and when we get to the point of the lighting of the Christ candle, just before we sing Silent Night together, uh, I'll light a candle from that Christ candle, and then I'll pass it around to the ushers, and they'll pass it on to each of you. Now, as you do that, remember to take the unlit candle and tilt it. Don't tilt your lit candle. Hold your lit candle straight, and then tilt the unlit candle so that you don't drip wax and burn your hands or your fingers, or worse yet, get our carpet all covered with cake. No, I'm kidding. Uh, but those are the instructions on how best to do that. But as we begin, let us prepare our hearts. Let us prepare our minds. Let us let music take us to a different place in our spirit as we sing these familiar songs. Thank you. 
Please join us in singing Silent Night. Now please remain standing as we close with number 246, Joy to the World, and let's let them hear us sing.
Amen. Uh, please extinguish your candles and you can drop them in the box on the way out. I do want to remind you all that for the next two Sundays, this Sunday and January 2nd, we will just have one service at 10 a.m. And I would love to see all of you there. I know some people uh, only come on Christmas Eve and Easter, and that's okay. We love having you here on Christmas Eve and Easter, but we have some wonderful services on other Sundays as well. So next two weeks, 10 a.m., and then back to 9, 30, and 11. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Merry Christmas, everyone.